What's going on everybody? Painblade back here again with another Summoner's War video. That's right guys, today we're going to be covering the top legendary units. By unlocking every unit, I've had the ability now to test them all, and I want to talk to you guys and tell you guys which ones you should be focusing on. Check it out. Alright guys, we're back at it again. As I mentioned in my intro, I have unlocked every single character and I've got actually the ability to get them up to level 11. Some of them are 10, some of them are 9, but I've actually built teams around every single one of them and put together a list of units I think you should definitely be focusing on if you have these units. So let's go through that guys right now real quick and talk to you guys about the best legend units in the game. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and do, instead of card level, we're going to do by card grade. We know a top, okay, top grade here. And we're going to focus on the best legends out there and why they're going to be used throughout the meta. And you should be focusing on getting these units up as quick as you can. All right. So the first one we're going to talk about here is Rockon, guys. So Rockon is an incredible unit. There's two reasons what make him really good. Number one, he scales all of his damage off of max HP, which means you can make him either super tanky or you can make him a really good DPS. Now, the thing that makes him incredible, not only is he super tanky and he has really good DPS, but his buffs apply prior to the damage. So you can get yourself immunity and attack up to right away before you do frontline damage. Now, if you don't know what frontline damage is, guys, that is an area of effect attack on the front units. If they're all already done, it's gonna attack the back units instead. So whoever is in the front is who he attacks and he does quite a bit of damage. He does initial ground damage and then fire damage following that now what makes him super dangerous guys if you can get his skill stones you can actually burn his mana cost from five down to four uh, it does take quite a bit of effort obviously to get these in summoning and luck but making him one of the better damage dealers in the game also you can avoid pesky things such as stuns right so if so someone pulls off a stun card uh, or or you know a stun unit uh, or somebody who's trying to you know debuff you with slow and stuff it will not affect him because he put, he grants that immunity and attack up to on himself. So an amazing unit, guys. Highly recommend using him. And either way, whichever way you want to go, you can go tank or DPS in the back row or tank in the front. You cannot go wrong with Rockon. Okay, going on to our next one, guys. Tessarion. Now, Tessarion is an incredible, incredible damage dealer. Now, the thing with him is he's a full AoE front and back line damage dealer and he does insane amounts okay so if you have the proper runes on him which is essentially the attack runes um, you can do a plethora of damage now he does take five i don't have a skill stone but if you can get the skill stone guys he can also do crush or so he can do stun with a fixed chance when he does fire crush he increased the damage by five percent per harmful effect on the enemy so pairing him with anyone who does uh, such as Beretta, anyone who does dots will do incredible moves there uh, and more damage there. And it also removes harmful effects granted on all, all allies whenever he does this. So that's the legendary one. So making him a buffer and also somebody who's a debuffer. So cleansing is incredible. Making him a really wanted unit and pretty much part of any team. You can put him on a single target team in case you need AoE damage. Or you can put him on a full AoE team and watch him shine. Oblivion itself is actually pretty cool too. It uh, doesn't allow passive skills to be active. So which means anyone who has skill stones or anything that's a passive in their abilities, they will not be allowed to be active as long as Oblivion is, is on them. Okay, so really good unit guys. Incredible damage and incredible debuffs. Alright, moving on guys. Let's talk about Wusa. Now, I'm skipping a few units here because I'm talking about which ones I like best. Right, Wusa is a counter unit through and through. The cool thing about him is if you can save up enough uh, mana to actually do this, he grants immunity and shield. So if people who like to use uh, Beretta or you know somebody like uh, Nikki with debuffs, he is pretty much the best stopper. What you want to do essentially is wait for the 5 mana, let them cast, and then cast this right before as a counter, stopping any of those dots to come through, making him an incredible force to deal with. Also, anyone who likes to use Lapis and do a ton of damage with their AoE, that shield is impressive to stop that damage from coming through. So, Wusa, a great counter unit for AoE and daughters, guys. So don't sleep on this unit. Does cost quite a bit, will do a lot for you though, and it does. he does scale off of max HP, so keep that in mind. All right, going on to Nikki. Our Nikki here is an incredible daughter. Now, dot stands for damage over time, right? So if you played any RPGs, you know how that works. Essentially, it ticks away and it hits them. But the, thing, the cool thing with Teddy, Teddy spell is it hits the back row and then it ticks three times, which does a ton of damage. And if it's not cleansed or healed off, it'll do the full amount of damage. But if it is healed off or cleansed, 
What it ends up doing is stunning the entire back row that has it already, and it does damage as well too, making her a double threat. Nikki is not someone you want to trifle with. If you have her, you should be building her for your dot team or your regular team just to abuse the back row as much as you possibly can. Nikki is a force to be reckoned with, guys, so don't, don't sleep on her. All right, going on to Poseidon, probably one of the most wanted characters as a legendary, really low on mana cost, only costing three, attacks all enemies with a massive tidal wave, very low damage, but what matters most, guys, is deceleration two, reducing mana regenera regeneration by 17.8% per decelerated monster, making it incredibly powerful if you can land this on more than one unit, of course. Uh, it's the only one in the game right now, deceleration two, guys, so Poseidon is a big, big want. Uh, he does do really well with almost any ruin. Uh, you can use, um, you know, uh, accuracy if you want to do better, better chance of causing deceleration. You can use attack if you want to do a little more damage. Uh, you can do HP, HP for re revival, or you can do what I've done and do mana cost for one turn and pair him with Megan and do incredible things with acceleration up and deceleration down, uh, making him one of the most wanted units and best units with the lowest amount of cost for any legendary out there. All right, moving on, guys. Here now. Hathor is a really good unit um, if you if you like if you're fighting somebody who's using a lot of back row DPS, right? The good thing with Hathor is she puts everybody to sleep, meaning that the back row cannot be touched or hit, uh, and they have to wake up on their own, which gives you a lot of time to DPS the front line, right? So really good counter unit, guys. So only use for counter, especially against tough back line. So if you're fighting people who like to use uh, Lapis or like to use Nikki or Beretta, she will give you. A lifetime of saving and a heartache on the opponent. So definitely a wicked unit. Uh, really hard to counter though. So you got to be really good at countering things. And you got to be patient with her. All right, moving on, guys. RDML. Now this unit here is unique in the fact that all of its attack power comes from its defense and the fact that she can actually uh, remove buffs and do damage and heal higher based on the buffs that she gets. So really really good unit good front line good back line and is extremely powerful on removing buffs so if somebody likes to have a big buff team and you want to just constantly harass that unit uh, or that player by constantly removing those buffs and doing a ton of damage including heals Artemiel is an incredible incredible unit to have so guys don't sleep on that and plus one of the coolest designs in the game not to say all right going to Eleanor Eleanor plays dual roles Eleanor can be a unicorn and use her abilities to um, transform and become a tank with reflect damage defense up and crit resistance up three on herself only or she can be an incredible healer so one thing you want to focus on guys is using her to debuff and cleanse sorry to cleanse any debuffs on you and also to provide you crit resistance up too especially against units like sophie who like to do a ton of crit uh, or other units like um i'm trying to think of other units that do that um uh, Camilla, right? So Camilla does crit rate up. So this is a great counter to that, uh, making it an evil playing field. At the same time, she does heal all allies uh, with the cleanse and is based off mass, max HP. So you can't go wrong by using Eleanor in either or way. Uh, and then lastly, Ragdoll. Ragdoll is really cool. One of the best assassins in the game, and what actually Ragdoll does is he targets anybody that targets you first, and then he'll target that unit no matter where they are in the field, whether it's back row or front row, and also causes Dragon's Gaze. So every time Dragon Gaze is applied on somebody, every time he's the main target and that is applied, it will actually send a dragon into that line and actually AoE DPS any units in that line that he is that's affected by it. So really cool. Now the top units I'm gonna say focus on guys. This is my suggestion here. You want to go with Rock On uh, in terms of uh, tank for legendary. Uh, you want to go with Nikki for damage dealing uh, AOE. You want to go for Eleanor in terms of uh, the ability to heal and cleanse. And then lastly, in terms of uh, debuffs, you want to go with Poseidon. So those are the four main ones in my my opinion that everyone should be focusing on. Uh, honorable mentions, of course, to Sarion for damage, uh, Perna for AOE uh, damage as well as a dot. And then lastly, I didn't mention him, but uh, Ganymede is actually incredible, but it requires a little bit of luck. He can burn cards and it causes deceleration, but he's he's a little too highly cost with five minus as four because you have the, have the stone, obviously, but he does cost five and I'd rather have other units used instead. So guys, that's my list of the top legendaries. Those are the four that I would focus on more than anybody else if you have them. Uh, but as I mentioned, I went through every single one and what they do, if you have any of those that I mentioned, guys, they should be on your team somewhere. You probably should be utilizing them anyways. All right, guys, this is Payne. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a wonderful day, everybody.